Hey guys, uh, we're just going to pick up kind of where we left off with our climb through standard mythic uh, 333 currently with our Boros deck. Uh, once again, here's the list um, 22 land, and just been trying to kind of feel it out. Uh, right now, I I kind of like where the list is at. Um, I will say that I've been sort of noticing a trend where I end up with like a lot of like three or four drops and not quite enough mana to cast them. So I'm trying to decide if I want to ultimately keep it like this or maybe shift like one Sunrise Cavalier to like a third play with fire or something like that. But for the moment, it's uh, it feels good. So we'll see. So nice opening here. No one drop, but we've got twos through four, so looks good. And I think we're going to start with the um, needle leverage here pathway because we're going to want to have the two red. Um, if we draw a Fury Calm um, Snarl, we're going to want to have one of our basics still in our hand, so I think I'm going to lead with this. Looks like we're up against straight uh, mono white aggro. I feel okay about this match. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't seen it too often, but often enough. So I think we, we still push a little bit here. Um, like we could hold back with our Cavalier, but if we just walk into like Brutal Cathar, it doesn't feel great. I think we are okay racing here a little bit. And I guess like by not hanging back, we allow him to do something like Spellbinder. So that that is annoying, it's true. I guess like he wants me to use Cathar because he probably has removal for it, I'm guessing. Um, so, yeah, I guess we, like, he wants to trade Spellbinder with our Cavalier. And I think it's okay, but it's not amazing. I think we run out Stormseeker, and we could attack with both. Um, but I almost want to just like pump the Cavalier, get the extra trample damage in, and then have something back for his Thalia. So like he is willing to trade here, but he is taking some damage to the face for it. I don't know if that was right or not. It's 
Yeah, definitely. I'm just, I'm just not sure about this match. Like how aggressive you want to be. And I guess here, like we could like remove his Thalia, so we can push with both. Um, and that's probably fine. We could also just take out the Spellbinder and then just start pushing with Stormseeker. I I don't like Thalia because of the first strike and like if he eh, if he has yeah if he has any kind of pump effects like Luminarch or if he has um, anything else it just totally shuts down our offense. So I think I do want to actually get rid of Thalia here. And I suppose, interestingly enough, we we could choose to just like pump the Cathar and I guess trade Cathar for like the attack swing, but it doesn't feel great. Um, he probably wants to trade Spellwinder for Stormseeker, so I think maybe we maybe we're okay with that. I kind of like just sending an adversary and trying to like. Offer the bad trade. See what he does. So if we can get him to trade Spellbinder for Adversary, like we just have. I don't know. Maybe I'm just spending too much time on this and overthinking it. Okay, yeah, there's a problem with the Thalia. Um, yeah, maybe we should, just should have pushed damage. It's it's hard to know, yeah. So I guess here we get Thundering Raiju out. And we can make it a 5-4 to try to, like, present. And I think that's probably our best move. To get some kind of two for one here. And like it's not amazing, but we, we do have to kind of break through since we, we don't have evasion in the stack at all. So now we can send in our initiate, and even though he can just like block and bounce with his initiate, uh, we, we gotta get moving here because he can start turning on his crawling barons and just locking us out. So I think we just gotta start pushing. I think this is the problem with mono white is it it is a little bit of a sturdier deck than ours and so we kind of have to capitalize on just like burning them out quick this is an interesting block um maybe it would have been better to make like a four three instead of sending with both that actually probably would have been better so that was probably a mistake. Um, okay, so we get a 3-3, three, three, but if we kill the barons, we stop it from becoming like a 4-4 four, four out of control. Um, 
then he has to invest mana in it. I don't know, I mean, like, I feel like he just brick walls us if we don't kill the barons. Like, we almost have to kill the barons here, annoyingly. And then, as much as it hurts, I think we have to also kill Luminarch here. Just, it's, it's just too powerful. So I think this is kind of how we do it. Yeah, it's not my favorite, but I think it's the play. And then I guess this like makes it so he doesn't have access to immediate Cave of the Frost Dragon, unless he drew land. Okay, so this is kind of nice. Um, I think he's representing the Wandering Emperor, or possibly, like, if he has Wandering Emperor, it's so bad. Um, but we can't just, like, sit. <sighs> um, he could also have a Ganjo, or just nothing. I think, unfortunately, we, well, we don't have to walk into it. We could wait a turn. But, like, this is so tempting. So we can get him to three. Oh. I don't know if this is right. Like, I feel like he has... Like, if, it was, if, he, if he drew a land, he would have played it, so he could have activated this. So he definitely has a spell. And like, what spells could it be? Like, it could be Wandering Emperor or Eganjo. That's the only reason he wouldn't play it. So I think, unfortunately, we have to sit. So now he can activate Cavern, or Cave of the Frost Dragon. So I think, oh god, um, what we could do is we could attack with both, wait for him to activate, and then once he activates it, see is this non-land creature? Creature, no, okay, so this will work. So I think this is actually the move. So we swing in. Wait for him to activate. Use Play with Fire, kill the Apparition. Use Brokathar to take out his Cave of the Frost Dragon. All sneaky-like. Unless, of course, he has Wandering Emperor, in case we're just screwed. Okay, so he did have a Ganjo. Um... That's fine, I guess. So now we can't really get fancy. Um, I guess what we could do is we could like wait until his turn for him to like activate Cavern of the Frost Dragon. And then we could use um, the trick to get it, basically. And then block, or not block, but uh, otherwise we just get this out of the way and just bounce off his yeah, it doesn't seem great. So now I guess if he goes for the double block, we just blow him out, but that's basically it. Okay, so he's just gonna push. So I think we do the same play. Like if he activates Cave of the Frost Dragon, we kill his apparition. And if he does nothing, we just do the same thing. Okay, but now, I guess we can...
I guess we can bring Pathar his initiate. But then it looks kind of fishy. Because he's, he's going to know something's up. So maybe we just attack. See what he does. And try to play a little coy. Yeah. I think that's the move. Okay, I think he fell for it. Although, <laughs> I completely forgot this gives us not the creature back. Never mind. That's, oh god. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Oh well. Um, now we just, I guess, trade with the initiate and it's fine. Okay, that was. <laughs> we could still get it with because we've got, but it's this is worse. It's it's fine. And we actually can't because it was nighttime. So <laughs> I was just, oh my god, that was bad. <laughs> oh god, this is so bad. All right, well, wow. Words fail me at how, <laughs> how terrible that was. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, daytime and nighttime. It is hard to keep them straight. <laughs> I guess better lucky than good. Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Now you get to see behind the uh, the thoughts of a player like me. <laughs> um, yeah, wow, that was terrible. See, I'm still I'm still totally learning. Like, I, I do not claim to be a great player. You know, I'm just learning. I'm just I'm just a guy. I just work here. Many of you are probably better players, and that's okay. All right, so going to six, um, this looks good. I think, so you probably go like turn one, Kumano, turn two. I guess we go like one, two, or we could go one, two. R and three. I actually, I think I want to actually get rid of Cathar here. I know it sounds crazy, but stay with me. Like we have a lot of three drops to draw into. We also like don't have the mana for it now. It, we'll probably draw it, but I feel I don't know. I just feel like it's the move to. Like because you, you kind of want it to be your last spell. And, um, oh, interesting, we've got double Kumano. Okay, so now I could see, like, dropping this and then dropping, instead of, like, playing the tap land this turn and then having, like, two spells, we could stagger our Kumanos and it's probably just fine. Or we could lock into the right land and just have it be amazing. So this feels fine. But anyways, like kind of what I was getting back to saying with the um, the brutal Cathar is that like if you play it too early, you can get outvalued because it doesn't actually. It's not like an actual value play. It's just a tempo play. So if you try to tempo them out too early and stall out, you just lose. So you kind of want it to be like your your finisher, your last, the last card you play. And this actually worked out beautifully. Okay, so I guess we got the the good draw on the land. But what I was gonna say is if we didn't draw the, the mountain here, um, you know, they might draw a disruption us anyways, so. But we did draw the mountain, so it's fine. Okay, so here 
we definitely start with hopeful initiate even though we're gonna we're gonna play both of these cards like we're not gonna play adversary here it's better to double spell but we'd rather have the initiate hit and since he probably has to our disruption we're gonna start with initiate and this puts it out of range of play with fire or whatever else nonsense um, I'm still happy to drop this like if he's got it he's got it it's fine um, you don't know as we just be playing it next turn so whatever Okay, so I guess he has the fading hope, whatever. Like, they either have fading hope, some version of shock, or um, draw a disruption, or um, make disappear. So they've got one of those cards, and like, you never really know which one. So you just kind of try to do your best. Um. Okay, so I think we start with Adversary here. Um, I mean, Hopeful is fine. It's just that I'd rather have this hit play and get sort of immediate damage in. Like, sure, if he's got the make disappear, that'll happen. But if not, or Dragon's Breath or whatever, then, yeah, Dragon's Fire, sure. And voltage surge. Whatever. Okay, so he is going for Titan of Industry. Now, while it's possible that he still has um, Gerard Disruption or something like that. Like, he could have had that before and chose not to do it, which doesn't mean he doesn't have it. It just means that there's, like, a, maybe a 50% chance this will actually go through. So it's worth it to try for it. It's better than just trying to, like, Royal Eruption him with him at 18. Not that I wouldn't do it if I had nothing else to do, but I think this is fine. Yeah, and I thought it might get through. At least, maybe he'll bounce it or some other nonsense, but we're at least getting started. Um, so here, where am I putting the counter? Probably on etching, I think. Okay, there's gold span, so he's like one turn away. Luckily, that is all we need. Okay, so now this should be lethal. Let's see. Make that a four, make that a four. That'll become a three. Finish him. Okay, yeah, this will work. Um, I could even put it on this, not that it really matters, but I suppose this is guaranteed damage, so he blocks this, whatever, it's fine. I do like our matchup against um, Teamer, Titan of Industry. Like, we can usually kill them, like, the turn before they go off. But, like, the big trick there is, like, if you happen to have the extra land, like, if you're faced with a choice of, like, a three-drop haste or a two-drop haste, but the two-drop haste would leave you with an extra mana, you probably want to do the two-drop haste just so that it doesn't get countered. Because, like, the way they win is if they, like, they can usually win if they just counter you one time. Sometimes twice, but usually if they get, you know, if they get two counters off you, you're definitely losing, probably. But if they, sometimes they can still win even if they, like, disruption you just one time. So making sure you get your hits in really matters. Okay, this could be the same deck. Um, 
I don't know. It could be some sort of red green thing. So I think like he probably has burn in his hand for whatever we're gonna play. So I don't think it really matters what we play here. Um, Aspirin is obviously better if it sticks around, but there's no guarantee that'll happen. I think it's probably still Aspirin here. Yeah, I mean, the only other consideration is if we have, like, if we want to keep our planes to draw into a Fury Calm Snarl, then we could try to just, like, lead out with a adversary. Because um, this is a bit strong, Rick, especially if he has, like, big threats. So I'm a little tempted to just throw out the adversary here. So I think I probably will. Does seem counterintuitive, but like there's a really high chance he has just burn in his hand here. And there it is. It's like if we know it's gonna die, we'd rather lose the worst card. Okay, so I guess we're up against Joned value. Okay. Um, I think we just go. I think we, well, well, do we Royal Eruption here? I think we might. Trap Initiate and Royal Eruption. Otherwise, like, we, we could just drop Aspirin, but it's just, I want a double spell here. Or we could drop, like, Initiate and Adversary, but actually, Royal Eruption is better because it turns this on later, even though if we get rid of a land, I think it's still fine, so... Yeah, I think I like this. Like, it's not amazing, but it's... It's okay. Um, again, he could just kill Aspirin here. I think it's, it's fine to just eruption this. We're not getting any forward momentum, but this can just kill our Aspirin again, so I think it's fine. This is a very, very grindy match. Okay, so now, we, we, I mean, like, we could try to, like, slow roll this to try to get the extra value, but he doesn't have a board right now, so I'm fine just double spelling here. And then that'll open up our mana so we can start using, like, the end of the book bearing. That kind of nonsense. Definitely want to spread out value here and get adversary going. It's like we will take every tiny little piece of incremental advantage we have. Oh god. Which is not much. Okay, so he just drew total gas. Well, I guess we just hope he doesn't have more removal. He probably, I mean, he probably does, to be honest, but we'll do what we can here. And, like, it's so awkward if he has the removal in hand, like, he just totally gets us. But I guess with one mana open, it's pretty safe.
I don't feel like this is a great match. There's just so much value we're worth going up against. Although it's very kind of him to do that as a sorcery speed. I think we just take take the damage now. Like hopefully rip it off the top, try to race. Nope. Okay. Alright, now we have to start giving him extra advantage. Let's see, if we go to seven, I guess we can take one more hit. If we take one more hit, then like we have to rip it or we lose. Okay, we might just lose. Jund is, is not a great match. Just like it's it's fine. It's either that or royal eruption. And I think we go. I don't know. I, I just wanna I think I wanna cut Cathar. And unfortunately with this hand we do kinda have to play style first, so like then we'll play this on turn two. Was between Royal Eruption and Cathar, and like just playing Cathar early is just super dangerous because you can just open yourself up to blowouts and it just doesn't feel good. Like now, like Royal Eruption is perfect. Like this thing is one of those horrendous decks that has all kinds of buffs and other nonsense to get this thing going, and so killing this this turn feels great. Like, I think the rookie move here is playing Stormseeker and giving him a window with this thing. Um, like, it will definitely get some damage in, but then hit this will just get crazy out of reach and will just be... <sighs> I mean, this is a lot of damage we're giving up, I will say. This will be like four, five, six, six damage. Oh, God. I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's wrong. 
Like this, this is so good. I guess he found so too. Okay, so this like worked out way better, but but I remain with the point that that thing can be terrifying if he gets all the nonsense going. Um, re like Ledger Shredder does get out of hand if we leave it alone, I think. But like, do we just push crazy damage here? Like three. Seven, nine, twelve. God, that feels good. I mean, that's that's so much damage. I feel like we just just shove. Yeah, just push for twelve. Feels good. Again, we're back to Hopeful Initiate versus Kumano faces Kakazan. And I gotta say, I kind of am feeling the Kumano faces Kakazan here. Um, the only reason that I am not is because we need double white the next turn otherwise. Well, I'm, actually, we would just go into Luminarch. Or rather, we'll need double white on turn three, which I'm not a fan of, because we need our double red for... So I think it just puts us into a bad position, even if it's slightly better, because of all this white that we have here to get rid of. I think we have to actually go initiate first, and then save our red lands so that we're open up for Raiju. So I think the decision is being made for us, just because of the mana and the way it shakes out. Otherwise, though, I'd probably go Kumano. So a very long-winded way of saying that we didn't really have a choice there. And then, like, if we, if he lets us get to pre-combat, like, we are definitely putting the counter on this guy. He probably won't, but... And I guess, like, there was an argument here that we should have just played Kumano instead, even though it was mana inefficient, and that actually probably would have been correct. So, would have been better to play Kamado with him leaving Mountain up. That actually was, was probably a pretty big deal. Luckily, we just drew play with fire, so that feels good. Um, we're going to leave Mountain, so in case we draw the Fury, Car the Fury Calm Snarl. God, that's hard to say. Okay, well, we're kind of running out of juice here. So, like, this is where it's nice to have 16 3 plus drops in our deck. And, 
Like you might think, actually, okay, we're on two here. Yeah, we really should Cathar this. If we weren't on two, then I would just push with Den of the Bugbear this turn. But I think because we have this on two, we want the extra. Even if it gets blown out next turn, we... Yeah, I think it's better. I just hate giving up that extra free point. Well, we're giving up a point by playing this and not increasing initiate. So, okay, that's how I'm going to justify it. So instead, we're going to play this and then buff up our initiate. I think that's better. And we get an extra dude. Yeah, this is just much better. I guess he turns on, but we're at 17, so I'm not, I'm not super worried about that. Like, this is, to be fair, a lot of damage, but... Okay, that's actually pretty sweet. So he's at seven. So if we play Stormseeker here, we get the plus two. So in Trample, it's a five, four. So it's a force block. And then this is four, five, six. Okay, yeah, it's game. That was good. But yeah, the more you play this, the more you see that like the mana is just super intricate and annoying and yeah, trying to get it just right is really hard. And I still don't know if like it's if it's correct the way it's set up. I think I've got one sundown pass and two fury Kong snarls. And then like four pathways and uh, the tokens in and the rest are basics. So if we were going second, this would be like we keep it because it's we have all of our mana, but it'd be really questionable because this is definitely a slow hand. But going first, we might be able to get away with it. Like I, I feel like I have to keep this hand. It's just. It's got the business, if I can get to turn three. So this is, I guess, mono red? Mono red artifacts or something. Okay, so we just get it out. Uh, we want to leave Mountain in our hand because of the the Snarl land. Um, it's not a huge deal, but at any rate, that's the reason.
Red white? Huh. I usually see this in like Rakdos, but. Okay. So, what are the chances he's holding up some kind of burn spell? I don't know that there is. Like, I want to play Thundering Raju here, but because he's holding up, like, potential burn, I feel like it's a little safer to get our Cavalier out there. Like, I know I'm giving up damage, but, like, with open mana, I'm a little bit less... Yeah. Just feel a little bit better about this. Because you could easily have, like, what's the two mana, three damage nonsense that if you have a modified creature, does extra. Okay, so I guess he maybe didn't have it, but... <sighs> yeah, I think we're, we're still winning, so it's, it's, I think it's fine. I don't know, just like, Raiju is so good, like, you want to make sure it connects if you can. And like we were giving up two points of damage, I think, yeah. Oh, so officially under top 250, but let's try to go for top 50, wouldn't that be cool? I think that's that's the plan. I love the uh, Command and Conquer reference here, which is a very old game. If any of you guys have played it, So I'd love your thoughts, um, whether it's like hopeful initiate into aspirant or hopeful initiate into adversary. Like usually I, I like initiate into adversary, but I guess like if you're up against like a, a big fat potentially green deck or something, maybe it's better to be a little bit more speculative and slow roll it with the ass pirate. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Okay, against black. Hmm. Well, so against black, you want to go tall. Like, we're giving up instant damage here. But I think growing extra counters could be nice. Like, he might have Blood Chiefs. He could have Blood Chiefs, in which case it'd be annoying. Yeah, I think I'm still going Adversary here. We definitely get damage in quickly, which is nice. And now we definitely want to go tall if we can. I 
there's no reason to, to get this thing out of the way. I mean, like, we, I guess we could for the damage, but we're losing potentially one damage this way, which might matter. Um, I guess I want to be a little speculative here about what we do with the play of fire. We're probably just going face, but even the extra scry to make sure we can get Raiju on time is a big deal. That looks good. All right, now we definitely want to go tall with our Raiju. Let's see if we if we put the counter on Aspirant, he goes to nine. I think we get a free attack with Aspirant here. Because uh, I'm actually 4, 8, 11. Yeah, no, he's just. Okay. If you put it here, this is just free damage. Okay, he's just dead. Okay, I think I'm going to call it a night, guys, but we will do more. So, have a good night, everybody.